I'm calling the special meeting of the Playground Working Group of the Darien Parks and Recreation Commission to order Thursday, July 20th. I mean, July 20th, 2023, 8.45. Well, actually starting at 8.54 a.m. Uh, the first uh, item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from April 27th, June 8th, and June 29th. Do we have any changes to those minutes or people have questions about them? Okay, I guess, let's see, I guess we just have enough for a motion to uh, approve the minutes. One of you guys want to approve it? Help. Okay, Sarah's first. Who's the second? This one, Ruth is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, the next item on the agenda is to follow up on the um, playground designs and next steps that we put together in Google Docs. Um, I hope everybody found that useful. I just added in some things. Uh, Pam has some revisions. And then there was another response re regarding swings. So I'm going to put that in. I just, that came late yesterday, so I didn't have a chance to. But do are people finding that document easier to work with versus just going through your emails? Like, look, we couldn't even find the agenda in our own emails just now. So I can imagine that it's important to definitely keep that document as a live, a living document that we can add to and put notes on, as Patty said, because we need to kind of get everybody's input in a good, in a, one place in a timely manner so that we can go forward. Um, but any ease, do people have trouble working with it? Just a quick question. The Google Doc, you could open it, you can put things in it, you can see everything. The only thing I that I found is that the vendors like doing things in PDF and PDFs don't go in a doc really well. So I've asked Pam to request JPEGs of every picture so that we could insert them into the document much easier. Um, Thank you. That's, that's Thank much you. easier for me to do that. You know, from a technical standpoint, the PDFs were just impossible. So if um, anybody, go ahead. Susan, please. I was just going to say, I found that helpful. You know, I, I do like the idea of having it all in one space. I still feel like there's a lot of information in it. So when I'm trying to look at the different comparing one to the other, I loved when we were live on Cherry Lawn at the picnic table and mm -hmm. we had those big um, blow ups next to each other because I felt like that was the actually a great way that we can kind of and I know Patty was kind of like going through each one and saying like oh, well this one has two slides this one has this right it really let us kind of compare them and so that's hard for me to see on this google document where it's just like a b c pick one um but this was helpful to have it all in detail like once we kind of see the big picture but I, I did like having those to make it more available for everyone else on the team who couldn't make it to cherry lawn because i felt like those visuals really let us see the big picture i agree ruth um it's just challenging like getting everybody to one meeting but i feel like let's if we can just like bring it down and make the changes on this level then we could have the vendors then do the blow-ups again and we could meet in person again. I, I think we do, we will benefit from more in-person meetings, but I think the challenge is, you know, it's hard even for this group to meet on Zoom. So let's try to keep those meetings going also, but let's definitely narrow down what we need first and then have the vendors come and then we'll blow those up again and be in, in the, at the park to look at them. Sarah, do you have something? I don't know if your hand's raised or if you're doing something else. Well, there's two Sarahs now. I'm sorry, Sarah. Oh, that's a, right. Sarah B. I'm so sorry about that. Um, I'm just okay. trying to get out of this direct sunlight. This is like, <laughs> I need curtains. <laughs> hey, it's better than rain, Sarah. Can't complain. <laughs> I think I'm blind. Um, any more input about the doc system or how, you know, better to work together as a committee? Those are, those are great suggestions, Ruth, by the way. Sounds like everybody... You're good with that. Um, so I don't think we've had a ton of input. Like I looked at the doc the other day and there's not, I mean, outside of the things I actually inputted from what I got from the meeting from the group, I haven't seen m much in the way of input. I might've done a really great job or people <laughs> you know, haven't had a chance to look at it. So I guess my encouragement, not obviously the people that are here probably already looked at it, but maybe for the commission, the committee that's looking, watching this on video to, I encourage you to put your feedback because I think that's going to be really important in terms of narrowing down our design choices. Um, but my sense is that, you know, I know that we have a lot of time, um, you know, we have until 2026. We still have to do Baker 
That's one thing to keep in mind. And we do also have, we're at the whim of trying to figure out what the supply chain and in terms of getting the equipment in place and also, you know, how we can do the timing of that. So I, I'm going to operate from the point of view that we need to move forward in the most efficient way possible. And summer tends to like people are traveling in August. So August, like we don't even have a commission meeting in August. And I'm assuming people are going to be doing a lot of travel. So we kind of lose August very quickly. And then the school year comes and then everybody's busy getting their kids back to school because this is a very kid heavy group, which is great. But it's just that that timing will be affecting us, too. So um, I think that I would like to have, you know, I don't know if we want to take August off knowing that or if we should meet even if it's virtually and start talking, I just, I'm struggling with that answering my question myself. So um, what are people's thoughts and their time, you know, how, what's going on in their lives that they can devote more time to really getting this design narrowed down or design choices, I should say. Everybody's laughing, like everybody's smiling. I think everybody's a little overwhelmed with the kids at home, I'm guessing. And let me, let me check when, when we were scheduling our next meeting. I don't even know when that is for August, but I'll, I'll at least put that out there. You have a meeting um, on your agenda, Pam. It says August 17th and okay. August 31st. So there are two meetings. And I mean, those were set you know, a while ago with the idea that it would keep us moving forward if we had meetings scheduled. But those are, you know, I just feel like maybe we can drop one of the meetings for sure um, and keep the other one. And I guess the first question that is, which one would people prefer? Would they prefer to meet in late August or mid August? We're away late August. Um, so I could do the mid August, but don't, don't plan around me if other people are. Yeah, I think it's not the worst thing only because I think people are just prepping for back to school by end of August. So they get really, you know, frazzled. At mm -hmm. least. What do you think, Ruth? I mean, I, I can do, I, I could be available for either of them. But my my thought would be, you know, we are putting aside together these times that we're, that we are together. Like, I don't know, I just feel like if we can, in my mind, kind of be a little more productive during this, like during this time right now, like I feel like the people who are here, like, I don't know, I feel like a lot of times we just keep making more of times of when we're getting together, but then right. we're, we're, we don't utilize, our group doesn't really utilize the online communication. I, I feel like we don't do much when we're not talking, right? right? So like, I feel like as much as it's hard to get together for these things, I feel like we kind of need to have more checking in even if they're shorter, because like, I feel like it's the only time we're kind of checking off progress. Um, whereas like if we get emails, like we are all, we're all overwhelmed with emails and seeing visuals. But if we do like the two meetings and they're like 30 minute meetings or something, we just say, oh, this is the update. Oh, we found out that this slide is what they were going to go in. Like, I'm curious to know, like the swing stuff that we have talked about, you know, like there's questions that I, I feel like in my mind, they're just lingering. And then I forget my questions because it's like been a big, long time that as I'm thinking, like, what were the designs? What were our problems, right? So personally, as much as I find it hard to make this meeting, the more consistent, I think, the better to keep it going. Because I feel like as much as we want to utilize our online emailing, I don't think we're as motivated to communicate that way. That's a good point. So you would, you would want to have both meetings go forward? Personal, personally, yeah. I think it'd be effective to just keep it on the schedule. And even if it's yeah. a shorter meeting, um, just try to okay. keep, keep checking in on each other. I'll say, Susan, that from my perspective, you know, um, you and me and Pam have just uh, um, been very involved in a very, very large project uh, that has now you know, we're moving on to a next thing. I haven't, normally I give you my feedback right away. I would have been online. I have not given any online information on the document. So I would like to be able to deep dive and really give you uh, more feedback on that. And I intend to do that um, starting this weekend, since one thing is moved past yeah. and we're moving forward on that. And so I'm happy to give that. Um, I'm respectful of 
people's times. I do get what Ruth is saying in terms of checking in. Um, I've done a lot of meetings even on vacation. I'm not asking the, the parents to necessarily do that, but if some of us can do that and then we're able, you're able to do a one page recap that we send out, you know, yeah. as a chair, just give the one page recap of this is what we've learned. This is where we are. And uh, Pam's going to talk about what's, you know, the next stage with Maguan, that kind of stuff is helpful. Okay. So that's great. And I agree with you. It's just, you, you want to keep in, keep the momentum, but it's just hard with a large group like this to make sure that we get everybody's feedback in a timely manner, because I feel like the next step is definitely to go back to the vendors and say, we loved your design. You're like our finalist, but we need to see X, Y, and Z, you know, we love our you. and then, you know, yeah. each vendor had a different set of things that like wants and wishes that we then saw that we could use in each of the designs. So I want to get that back to them because it's going to take them a while to flip those, um, that, those, that feedback into new designs for us. And that's when we do the next step. We're kind of at the point where we we're still at the same place. Like we have their designs, their first designs, and we're not, uh, we can't move to the next stage unless we as a committee then go back to them and say, we need to see X, well, you know, all of these different features added in that we, we would like, these are our wish lists. And if, and then come back with your kind of your best and final, and then we're going to look at those again. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, like going back and forth. I think with, I agree with it's like, you know, when you work with a contractor, you're, they're sure. waiting for our replies to kind of move forward, you know? I understand that, but this is a big ticket item. And yeah. so I, oh, no. I would agree with Ruth that we definitely need an in-person meeting uh, to have everything laid out before we make any decision. Um, so we can all be in the room and visually looking at that. And maybe that ends up being a night one and we can pick a day, we can offline oh. pick a date that might work depending on what works for folks. So that could be that uh, September meeting. Just a suggestion. So, okay. So then what would we be doing August 17th or the 31st? That's the only question I have. Like, I don't mind. Well, if, every, if everybody has time to really do a little bit more of looking at the documents, I know for me, example, um, it, I'm not saying we have to do the 17th and the 31st. This is almost too long. Yeah, ago. yeah, no, no. I'm just we trying to figure out the like, timing we need to do at least one meeting. And if the 31st is busier because everybody's traveling, maybe we can do the 17th and then just have, we've had time to revisit what was put, what everybody put as comments on the document for you that will red line. What, what did people think about me putting after this meeting that we want everybody's feedback by, you know, X date X and then with the idea that we give our vendors two weeks to come back with the next, I mean, it's not a final, best and final. I mean, we're probably gonna go back and forth for a while, but I'm just saying, cause if you don't tell people a deadline, things aren't gonna get done. I mean, that's the way I am. I'll be pushing things down if I don't think, if I don't think there's a looming deadline cause I have so many other deadlines going on. I just think it's important to tell people, this is our final chance to get for this first set of drawings input to the finalists. So that they think they have a few weeks to come back to us with their the next iteration of what we're thinking of doing. Well, we need that. Curtis's input. We need Pam Garrity's uh, input as well. Uh, and I yeah. don't think we get feedback from the um, the vendors in two weeks. I think that's kind of an aggressive uh, thing. I don't, you know, I don't know. Pam's better at you know. I'm just go ahead, Pam. You can. So my input <clears throat> is that I wasn't at the last meeting in person. I just looked at the feedback that you had in writing, Susan, which was yeah. helpful. Um, so I went back to the vendors with any of the questions I could read that the group had. The most responsive vendor by far is John Hollerbach, who is doing our McGuan Playground. With rapid fire, they come back with a new design, you know, um, the changes we want right away. So that's, that's one thing. The other groups I'm struggling with getting the feedback that the group wants from them. So for instance, Burke, that was the last feedback I sent to the group, which was, you know, someone had said in this group, they wanted an extension of the, the, um, playground yeah. surface but yeah. he didn't know as to where you wanted so it was very it, it, it was confusing for me to even ask the question because he wasn't sure how to answer it 
He could, however, answer that the play, the swing sets were brand new. They weren't existing. So that answered that checkbox. So I think we just need to be more, I need this group right now to give me distinct questions that they want me to deliver to the vendors. Because at that point, we need to narrow down because they're all hanging now. So let's narrow down the groups. Um, and then I see that the group also wants the vendors, some of them just two to five year old and some five to 12, which again could change the overall price because mm -hmm. some are quoting the entire job. Like Creative Recreation gave an X amount of $30,000 um, discount on our Maguan based on the entire project. So that could change there too, depending on whether he's getting just a partial partial project or the full project. So we really need to narrow down those things. That's important information. Thanks for sharing that, Pam, about the reminding us about the 30% discount on doing the overall project, right? Yeah. And that's important for everybody to understand because we did have that discussion. Remember, Susan, where people, you know, we're saying, well, maybe a different group does the two to five versus a five to 12, but that's part of the economics that we have to look at as well. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, why don't you speak first? Cause you have it. Yeah. Sorry. I'm also sorry. I missed the last meeting. I was really bummed. Um, uh, so I guess I'm trying to play catch up too to kind of what Bruce said, like where, like, I don't know where we're at either, I guess. Like I saw the four designs. I looked at them. I could tell you personally, I won't say it, but like, I have one that I was like, oh, this is the clear winner for me. It just, to me, just seemed like the one that I liked the best. Um, so I guess I'm just so curious. We still have the four and hearing obviously what Pamela is saying and one is being more responsive and not that, that person should, you know, necessarily get it just because of that. But are, is there any reason like we haven't narrowed it down more? Are we are we not ready to kind of just say like we hate this one design like why are we even discussing we, it and wasting that precious time I don't know maybe there's maybe someone loves each one and there's no reason to I'm just I, and then I know that for Maguan we did and I know we're not trying to waste anyone's time but we had them at, what do we have three different companies I think come on Pamela and do the um like go over it with us and people were able to ask those questions live versus writing it down and then Pam having to do an email and then coming back and then it being like, what was the question? Like, it just feels like a lot of back and forth. And if they really want our business, will they not do an online meeting with us, which I know is time and we have to meet it, make an appointment or a schedule. And maybe that's the August meeting. I don't know. I just, I'm just trying to figure out. I also just, that that's just in my mind. I felt like it'd be Sarah, go to the source, ask the questions. They will definitely come for online. They're all waiting for our business. Okay. So, yeah. And I agree. I think we should, like, for instance, to me, when I'm looking at a vendor, their proposal's important, right? Some mm -hmm. of those proposals were not done very well. Right. Right. So, yeah. So poorly that we couldn't even figure out that we had to go back and say, can you give us something else? Because we can't even distinguish between what it looks like in real life. Yeah. So that someone had to right. give us a video that then made us feel like, oh, now it looks great, which which was really not apples yeah. to apples to all vendors because they right. didn't all give us then, you know, uh, videos. Right. So so I, I agree with you. We need to take the four, cut it down to two and have the vendors come and 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 give us their 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 um, proposals. For sure. we, so what you guys are talking about, when we met at Cherry Lawn, we did go through and look at everything. And if you look back at my I have the document, but I also wrote the report to the meeting and the meeting, we specifically narrowed two to five area to three vendors, the five to 12 to two vendors. It was, you, you know, and we did talk about the fact that costs would be impacted, but we also felt like they were so dramatically different that any economies of scale we get from doing both with the same vendor, I mean, would be really not as important as making sure that our kids got the equipment that was appropriate to the different areas. So the only vendor that overlapped, I don't know if you could see this, Sarah, for four to two, for two to five, we said creative recreation, Burke and game time were the, the, the top three. For five to 12, we said Emmy O'Brien and Burke. Those were the two. So they were very, it was very clear for us. I mean, if you have different input, that's where on the document, 
there's a spot that has committee feedback. That's a, not a final, you know, thing, but we needed to, as a committee, like you said, start narrowing it down because until we narrow it down and then go back to these finalists, I'll call them for lack of a better way to put it, we can't go back to them and say, can you make these changes? Because there were people that said, I like the Burke, but I don't see the swings. Mm -hmm. Like I like that, you know, so that's when it happened. But again, this is not written in stone. It's not the final list, but that's what we're trying to get to so that we can kind of get deeper because with this many vendors, it's too hard to mm -hmm. have you know, with two different areas with larger spaces. This is, this is McGuan on steroids. 10 times. So we have to be very efficient and think about that. And so that's what we did at that last meeting. Um, and I thought Patty's right. Being in person helped a lot to look at the drawings together and talk to people face to face. Um, and that's why we came to these. Um, but if you guys have, you know, other thoughts, that's how we did it last time to a degree. Susan, I agree with Susan. We did specifically for you all that were there. We did narrow it down. Remember, we had the discussion. We did narrow it down. Um, so thank you for reiterating that. I think that that was important. Um, and again, we don't want to waste the vendor's time going back and forth. I just I think these are in I think we have to start having some in-person meetings really to move forward. Um, Can I, I add something too? We can do our research in August, but I think before we make a full on decision to then make the next cut or whatever, we have to be much more buttoned up. One thing I just wanted to add on to what Susan was saying and to address what Sarah was kind of saying, we need to abbreviate, um, eliminate things. Um, we also pulled up what the McGuan, uh, McGuane, I always say it wrong, mm -hmm. um, what it looked like. So we can compare what like, all right, well, this because we like the creative re, re um, the creative re, whatever that one is. Mm -hmm. We liked that. And the fact that they came back to you, Pam, with such a great design so quickly. But it was so similar to what we were seeing that we just put in that we were really trying to keep in the back of our minds when we met in person was like where we've kind of talked before was like, let's make each one have its own like per characteristics, right? So like this one we were thinking was like more of the climbing and not so much those big heavy slides like that we just put in. So we are trying to also like looking at the pictures of where, where, what theme do we want at this one, which is why we were just like, they're so similar when we looked at the two pictures of what we just put in the three tower with the big slide. And it just was, we were just trying to think of something out of the box, which is why I think as a team, we were talking about like, we liked one for the five to seven, the 12, and then we liked the other one for two to five. But I think we weren't really thinking, Pam, that the quote, I wasn't thinking that it, we really shouldn't pick up two different ones because it could affect the long-term budget. But I think we we're trying to think of the whole big picture of the town of Darien. And that's why um, I know we tried to rule out the other ones because we thought they were similar. So it's not that we didn't like those designs. Right. You, I, I agree. We definitely talked about, uh, you talked in specifically and other people said, let's not do the exact same thing from one playground to the other. I agree with that. I, I will say if you've been to Maguan and you've looked at it and it looks great, the tower's higher than I thought it was going to be. It just, you know, until you see it in person, it's definitely higher, that outside climbing thing. And my first instinct was like, wow, should we have had this higher time climbing tower over at Cherry Lawn where there really are more kids than here? But I still love it. And so it made me think, um, if, because because people also said, let's do things that are more than just for little kids at McGuan, because there's so many kids that come off the baseball field and softball field and things like that. So I do, I um, I hear what you're saying, Ruth, because you know, we don't want the exact kind of design there as that. But I do think when we're thinking about it, here's just my two cents. We do need to have something substantial that's bigger and higher because there's there are older kids on Cherry Lawn. And I see that, I mean, we cut out um, creative resources on the five to 12, yet they're the ones who are being the most responsive, coming back, offered to give us the discount. So, I mean, we cut it out in a formal way. I don't know if it was considered a, a formal vote or not, Susan or we, You guys cut them from the only the five to the bigger yeah, area or we the- kept yeah. them in, We kept them in the two to five, Mm -hmm. but didn't have them in the five to 12, 
but okay. they did a really creative design for us for Maguan at the five to 12. I mean, for they the did. what could be at five to 12. Like I almost looked at that and thought, oh gosh, that could be a cherry lawn as well. I know you guys want different okay. things, but just throwing that out there. That's a really good point, Patty, because even creative recreation at their, this design compared to McGuan is a taller tower, even at Cherry Lawn. Their Cherry Lawn design is a taller tower than a McGuan, which okay. is, yeah. It's so, hard to know until you see it. It really is hard to know until you see it. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. Thank you for telling me that. Maybe what I can do is also get from John with Creative Recreation um, where that comparison of what his design is for Cherry Lawn, if there's one in the area that we can see, that's that would might be very helpful. Very um, helpful. I'll take a road trip. I don't mind going up and photographing and videotaping. Or yeah, something. that might be very helpful because as as even though it's similar in design, it might be helpful in the fact that um, it might have that wow factor when you see it in person. Um, and the same thing, we talked about this going to other places, right? The one with all the spiky ones that we were mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, that was Emmy O'Brien, I think. Oh, yeah. my God. But then they showed us the video and it looked cool. I really I want to see some stuff on site. Yeah. I really, I'm happy to do the work. Yeah. Uh, maybe I can grab one of, my, one of my pals on here with yeah. kids. And yeah. I'll go. All right, right. Listen, um, this is a, hold on one second, Susan. I think a good job for me is to get in touch with the four vendors and ask what facility near in Fairfield County yes. is similar to what they're presenting that we can go see? And I and think it, that would be helpful. And even okay. if it goes up a little further, even if it's further up in yeah. um, Connecticut or even down, you know, lower Greenwich or Rye or something like that, I think that would work too. Because what they're presenting, they've obviously have, have created in different locations. So let me handle that. I'll send out locations. I think that might be a very, very um, influential for August meetings. Thank you. So you're saying do the August meetings and do the site visits so we can report back or should we, um, what are you thinking, Pam, that we still have those meetings and, or is this, or are we giving people the task? Let's keep the meetings scheduled. And if we don't have any, if I don't have any, you know, content by then, we can cancel. Okay. Um, but but it will take me a few weeks to make sure that I get the, the information from the vendors and then off to the committee. And then right. obviously time to go, you know, if anybody's even in the area at that time to go visit. But okay. we can always cancel a meeting. Let's keep it okay. scheduled. We have been. Yeah. Um, can I as people are on uh, vacation you know, and going to different places, I'm sorry, Ruth, um, like um, Sarah, the other Sarah, <laughs> uh, Sarah R, I think it is, as you're, I don't know where you're going on vacation in August, but if you see an unbelievable playground, right, that's an example, we'll take a video or take pictures for us so we can see it, because somebody's seeing some of these live that are really unique, that would we think would be great for our town, would be helpful. Ruth, same thing to you, Sarah Baldwin, everybody. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, There's, we're going really to quick, so Sconset, there's an amazing playground with like a like ship theme that I love. Which, where is it? Sconset, uh, oh, okay. got it. Um, and it's got lots of like netting and climbing stuff. So yeah, okay, I'm happy to. It sounds like the Princess Diana one in London has that. It's like a ship and it's very natural. It's wood. Mm -hmm. Um, go ahead, Ruth. You or had. Something. I just didn't know, Pam, if Burke. Ever, I mean, if Emmy O'Brien ever did get back to you about the design with the swing, because I think that was a big one that we were just trying to figure out. Is this? Are they even in the running? If they can't provide swings, and I feel like we eliminated them. We were going to eliminate them if swings weren't in their design. So Burke got back to me about the swings, and those were in his design, brand new. But Emmy O'Brien has not responded yet. So I need to. And and if I could just respond to the last comment about. You know, if you're away and you see something really great, I think that kind of steps us back a couple steps. We're already in this. People have given designs, right? So we only have the four designs at this point. So they can tweak them, you know, but I I, I honestly, I, I love the fact that, yes, we can see a playground. That's awesome. Like, for instance, Lori Bora just came back from Chicago, gave us this incredible 
uh, video of this playground, like you're saying, Patty. But, yeah, but that really didn't make sense. That was massive. Right. I, I really meant peace. I didn't, I meant yeah. if there's a specific. It's fine. I understand what you're saying, Pam. We're down the line. I definitely. Right. Oh, I get it. That. Yeah, no. yeah, I get it. I get it. it it's it, If there was one piece, you know, that really made sense that we could be including like a climbing piece. Right. Know, Right. But so, I, well, it also just helps yeah. because you can yep. see who the brand is. Anytime yeah. I go to a playground, I'm always yeah. looking at the brand. Yeah. And who sent the really cool oh my one? God. Was it Ruth who sent the one in Texas? Was it Texas? Houston? Someone sent the email with that awesome playground and it was based it was on um was it I thought it was Ruth. Maybe it was yeah. um yeah. Alyssa. Um and it was like based on a DJ. You guys didn't see it? Oh my god, it was awesome. And it's a massive company that made it. Um they're a huge competitor to um, creative, uh, whatever, um, game time. It's like landscape. Um, structures. S what is landscape it? Landscape structure. Yeah. structures. Yes. And I have been to so many playgrounds. I'm like, God, this is a great playground. And it's always them. And so I'm always looking to see. And a lot of times I'll see that they have piecemeal. They're from different companies. They're not all the same. Um, but anyway, they, they they make awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. But um, as I was yeah. saying, that the one that Lori Boris said, that was $12.5 million. Yeah, that's, that's why that was kind of, that's not I even. don't know why she even said that. <laughs> but, but what it's else? good but perspective. It cool. It's good perspective because- We need a cheaper see. version of that. Um, <laughs> but I, I do encourage people to you know bring back things. I mean, because that is, I mean, our vendors are pretty- they want to work with us. So if there's an element they can provide that might not be exact, but kind of provides the same stimulus, like the climbing or whatever, I think I we need that. It's okay. No, no feedback is ever bad. I mean, we need good, we we want to hear from everybody and what your thoughts are, because it does help our process for sure. Because we shouldn't, if we're staying in a bubble of Darianne and just thinking about Darianne, we're never gonna have different amenities that, you know that the kids can enjoy if we're doing the same things over and over again. Um, so I'd prefer not that. I mean, going back to having different vendors, I, I really can't emphasize enough that I get it about the money savings, but at Playground by the Sound, we use two different vendors, all of our playgrounds, like even Cherry Lawn has multiple vendors. So we can choose, it's up to us to choose what amenities we like and the direction we go towards. And honestly, I also don't, want i mean we have a handful of playgrounds in town i don't want it to become one company like the beauty of darian now is you even go to the schools they use a different vendor the kids need different things they don't want to be doing the same exact things every time they go to a different places and we want them to have those experiences so don't base our decision just on oh we can get a thirty thousand dollar discount because at the end of the day that might not matter if all our playgrounds start to look the same and the kids get bored because then we're not doing our job so just keep that in mind and not be too worried about that. Um, but anyway, so it sounds like Pam's going to get, let's just move on timeline because I know we're going to start to lose time. Pam's going to get us some maybe um, ideas or places we can visit that the vendors have that have already presented. We can go visit them and have uh, visits um, in person. Um, we're going to keep the two August meetings, but I do think that we need to have something solid in September that we come together and finally say, hey, this is what we want to see in the new designs. These are our final lists. And we could revisit again. It, the, the list that we put together doesn't have to be the final final. Sarah, I know you weren't there. If you have something else that you think we're missing as a group, you know, feel free to bring it up. This is not, you know, there's there's still opportunity to input. If you have another vendor that you think we should give another chance to, or maybe give them room to add an amenity that would make them a better choice or an, another choice, that's a good thing. So let's let's go that way now, because um, I think we do need to move forward and figure out what we want in terms of uh, Cherry Lawn. Um, is it okay if I move on to the next agenda item, which is the update on the Lions Club donation, everybody? Is everybody okay with what we just did with the feedback? Okay, good. So Pam, why don't you start talking to us about the Lions Club donation and the shade structure? Is so yeah, the Lions Club came back and said that they were interested in donating the fencing um, to create the fence that would um, sur not surround, but would be in the parking lot, oh. delineate right the parking lot to the playground. And then they came back and also said they would give 5000 toward a shade structure. So I tried 
I tried to research before this meeting, but there's just such a, a vast amount of different shade structures that um, I, I can't give this group right now one that, you know, that, that it's anywhere from, you know, $8,000 to $50,000 worth of a shade structure. So I have to really narrow that down for this group and figure out, because we we have we don't have this budgeted to spend this amount of money out of my budget. So the $5,000 is wonderful towards something, but it has to be narrowed down to a specific amount and then to go back and say, yes, that's wonderful. And I did already, already respond to them and say, thank you so much for the potential donation, but we have to make some decisions about whether or not we can a afford it or we have to wait for it and budget. Did they give you the price of the fencing cost? No. And I know there was debate kind of internally on whether there actually was a need to have the fence to delineate versus putting bushes there, but there seemed to be a real strong call for a shade structure. So I don't, would they ever consider putting more, if if you all decided or you Pam decided that it made more sense to uh, put the money into the shade structure, do you think they would shift to that? Shift the whatever money might've been in fencing to shade or? Well, knowing that our, our park crew did the um, fencing at Cherry Lawn themselves, we bought the materials and, and and put it, installed it. It was only a couple thousand for the materials. It may be less. So I don't think it's a substantial amount. So, you know, maybe they, they were considering installing and buying that. So, and they are actually looking to get Rings End and donate the materials. So I, I think we're only looking at a couple thousand dollars for that fencing. So I, I don't know. I'm not sure which way to go about that, but very Maybe generous, very generous. Yeah. And um, we just have to make some decisions because it's just toward a, a shade structure and that shade structure has to be decided on and we have to figure out what the actual number is. Yeah. And we also have the trees. You can see where the yellow tape line is keeping people off of that. And so it, it gives you kind of a visual delineation line of where a fence would be behind there. And we have to figure out the tree roots that have been planted and all of that. I actually feel like the fence is more of a, a little bit more of a problem than a shade structure. Cause I feel like the shade structure can go to the right side of the playground, but that fencing comes across where we put the, the trees, but that's just my right. observation. I hear you, Patty. Um, I could see why you say that. The only reason, part of the reason we're kind of delineating this area is because of some of the naming opportunities that happened with the playground, you know, and we wanted to kind of give him an area that we could delineate and say that, you know, to keep the name of the Lions Club still at the playground was, that's why we were delineating this area um, with the fence. But I, then again, I'm not wedded to a fence, If but I'm not sure that we could provide shade there that would be that cost effective, you know, in that matter. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to see something. We could, I mean, we could, we could, we could tell them to hold and maybe Pam do a little more research on it. I mean, even if it's 2000, I mean, if we decide, she said eight to 50,000, let's say. So let's say if it was eight, just putting it out there. And we said, hey, instead of doing the fence, give us the eight and we'll do this other shade, shade, shade structure and still call it the Lions Club picnic area. Yeah. I'm okay yeah. with that. So why don't we hold on that and think about it, Pam? And I know you have a lot on your plate if you see something that comes up in your travels. Um, but there's no rush at this point. I mean, we're probably not going to get it until after, like when people want the sun at this point, you know, at the playground to enjoy. So just take time on that. Let's not rush. It's okay. You know, well, let's just get the, I'd rather the group hear what's going on with the playground now because you had some, a report last night at the commission meeting that I'd like you to share to the yes. students. They're on the same page with us. Okay, so my also, I would say that for the next two meetings, I will try to narrow down a couple shade structures. 
Okay. And I'll also get I'll also get in touch with the Lions Club and let them know we're still making we're still pondering um pricing. Yeah, that sounds great, if you don't mind. Yep. And so um my update with the McGuan playground is that the handicap world that we were so excited about, they have a back ordered piece, which I'm sure you all know that's the reason why the the um project has been installed well there's still apparently that piece for the um, ada world is made in europe and this vendor out in europe has said that they're no longer going to be making this this piece of equipment or this this piece that is for the world and so then they went back and forth because there's so many vendors in the united states waiting for this piece for their world that they had to negotiate with the vendor to say, "Hey, look, you, you got to be, you got to be good on this. You got to, you got to make sure that you make this, and then you can stop producing it. But you need to make good on all these people waiting for it." They've agreed. So now we have to wait another four weeks for it to be made and and delivered. So in lieu of not keeping that playground um, offline, we are going to move forward with the um, surfacing. The rubber surfacing, so that so that the playground can just be used, and then when that piece comes in, they'll make the cut where it's supposed to be in the rubber surfacing and install the whirl. So next week, it, they'll get started with the rubber surfacing, and and will and and Lou will be waiting for that piece, and then it will be complete when it comes in. So Sorry. basically, it's going to be flat surface right now until while we wait so it's safe to use like we don't have to put barriers around exactly it. No. so then the cut would happen after the fact and it'll be safe right away as soon as they install it right? exactly so no downtime per se for the for you know for that piece exactly can you, tell, can you just tell the group how um we're going to have a park monitor stand there well basically monitor it for eight hours when they do the porn play because you can't have anybody any deer any animals any high school I, yes. on it. <laughs> I don't know that it will be our park monitor because we've been I, I did inquire about his his time and he was willing, but that was four weeks ago. So I I have him on standby. I have our park crew on standby because some of those guys will want the overtime as well. If it doesn't work out for those two, the company has no problem with hiring a police officer if necessary. So we are kind of juggling those balls in the air, depending on when the company that does the pouring of the surface is ready. So they are separate. It's not creative recreation. Creative recreation hires this surfacing company. And apparently everyone's arms are tied behind their backs waiting for when this um, surfacing company can do the job. So no one knows when they will do it, when they have time to, we're all kind of waiting. So meaning the name of the surfacing company. I don't know. I don't know. So so when they when the surfacing company says they have like they have next Friday as a window, it could be nine o'clock, they're done at three o'clock, then we only have to have nine to three, right? They could come in and say they're coming in at four, they're done at five, we need someone from five to midnight. So we that that's what's pending yeah. right now. Have they, committed next week, though? Have they committed to next week? Did you get a commitment out of them for next week? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, John Hollerbach has said next week is what what they're intending to, to try to schedule. Yes. Okay. So, but that's, you're, you need someone for after the pour, right? Yes. And, and then after that, it's still soft for a while. It takes a while to cure. So people can't get on it for. How long did no, they? No, say they said you? eight eight hours is like the good minimum for right? people to then step on it and use Somebody it. Somebody steps on it, it's okay. They need eight hours of nobody on it, no deer, it no people, quickly, no anything. Sorry, it cures that quickly. Yes, I just remember when we did it for Playground by the Sound, we were definitely on pins and needles a lot longer than that. So no, that's I, I made sure that they. And that's what Sean's telling me. A good, they need a good solid eight hours. Well, they're guaranteeing the surfacing, so 
yeah. you know, and they know their stuff more than, and it might have changed. Maybe they have accelerants that now dry it faster, but it did. It felt like it took a while. We had it roped off for a while after we did the pour and play at Playground mm-hmm. by the Sound. So I wasn't sure. Well, they may have it roped off, but that doesn't keep people off it. So how long did you, did you have to hire someone back then? No, we just put police caution tape all over it. And I mean, the pour and play at Playground by the Sound is like a postcard. Like it's nothing compared to right. doing it. McGuan's a very large surface in comparison. So, um, okay. I mean, that's unfortunate, but that's stuff that's out of our control. And that's part of the reason I was saying about for Cherry Lawn, about getting everything in order so that we can order the materials, know that they are actually can be arriving at a certain time so that when there's let, 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 little downtime for the playground, right? Because that was our point here. That's why we hired the company to do the demo and everything and tried to keep that compressed. And now we're here where we're still delayed. So yeah, but we, I mean, I think we did a good job in November. Oh no, I'm not blaming us. I'm just saying that. Ripping up the playground. Let's remember there was talk about ripping up the playground in November. because Oh yeah, no, no, no. And I'm not complaining about that, Patty, but I feel like for Cherry Lawn, the stakes are much higher. There's more people that use that space than, you know, McGuan. Um, And I just think that it's very important that if we get our ducks lined up correctly and, and we can get everything deployed and planned out better, even more, I mean, and allow time and make sure that these companies are solid with the equipment that they've committed to give us for the time they've promised. Because, you know, if you're looking at supply chain thing, a part that's coming from Europe is going to take longer than something that's all made in predominantly the U.S., I would think. So I'm just putting that out there Mm -hmm. because I just don't want that to happen to us again. Um, the I want to say thank you for moving forward with this project. You know, I think they were great and they were on time. And then this, you know, this small element has affected things. And we've had to take a little longer to get the playground online. But I think that's a great solution. As long as you vetted it, they said it was safe. We're going to lay the porn play. I love it. We can move forward and get kids on that playground, you know, in another whatever it's going to be a week or two instead of having to wait weeks again. So thank right. you. For- vetting that and moving it forward. Appreciate yeah, it. Great. Um, one other element I forgot about, and it just, I don't know, some reason I just remembered it, is that Creative Recreation also said that due to some of the changes that this committee wanted to see, like for instance, no tube slides, open slides instead, they also said with that reduction, they could incorporate the brick walkway from the parking lot to the um, to the playground, which I thought was in- interesting because we don't have a handicap accessible walkway from the parking lot to the playground. It kind of it, it kind of start. I don't I don't think it goes. We do. Like, we do. We do. No, we do. It, it just doesn't go all the way, Pam. It doesn't go it all the way. All the way to the playground. You're talking right? about it the five just and the twelve. Yes. Yes. About the five to 12 because we definitely do to the two to five yes. and we definitely have the path inside the two to five that wasn't even on my radar screen till we were at the meeting right Ruth we were we we always think about the wood chips that are there and we're focused on the on the swings and the slides and the rocking and the swirling cups but I wasn't even visually thinking about, oh, there actually is a path already in the two to five. So that was good. Yes. So so he's talking about continuing a pathway up to the five to 12. Right. I think that would be a great idea. Remember, we have a long water pipe that just kind of hangs out there. So that will have to be a consideration for laying anything over that. That's a drainage pipe out. We want to make sure that we don't break anything. But so you're saying that if we didn't do the tube slides, that gives him maybe money to right. do other things, but is well he just recognized that it, he it, it stops. He doesn't do that construction though, does he? He doesn't do no but he, he would like anything we would sure. for surfacing they hire out, but he would put that as part of the project to extend that pathway to the playground, which is interesting because it just it doesn't go all the way. So that was just one of his suggestions, and I'm just sharing that. And if we narrow down and he becomes one of them, he can share that with the group, too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's interesting because all that thought process for all the vendors is so important. 
because they're looking at the property too. They're looking at all those elements. And I feel there's some sort of disconnect with some of the vendors. I'm not even getting those questions, which is interesting to me. Yeah. You know, kind of just through like, I'm not gonna even mention, but you know, like one of the vendors, I felt that their proposal was just horrible. Like you didn't even really get a sense of what it was or is that they want. And here we are going, oh God, it will we'll, we'll look different, but I, I'm just disappointed. I'm disappointed in a couple of the vendors that that, that sent proposals because I don't get a real idea. I don't get a real good feeling for what their equipment is. Well, and then that, that will lead to, that will help inform our decision-making. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the well, feedback. Yeah, definitely report on that non-responsive stuff because even if we like a design of a company that you think has not been really that easy to work with, they're not going to be easy on the other end either because this is the time when they are supposed to be very yeah. and sales oriented. And if they're not doing it now, I prefer not to go forward with that kind of situation. So um, that's good stuff to report. So I think we're at 9.45 and... I just want to double check if anybody has any other, you know, anything else they want to share or they want to discuss. Um, otherwise, I'm going to close the meeting and hopefully we can um, have our committee members watch the meeting and Pam will provide us with that list of places we can visit and we'll, we can have our next two meetings with more productive conversation. But definitely look at the doc if you can. I know it's still challenging on the computer screen, but We'll try our best. Uh, Pam does have to print it out laminated copies in her office. So if you want to see them in person, they're there. I think they're 11 by 17, I believe. Um, so that's just another way to see it because your screen may or may not be bigger than that. So um, that's helpful. And definitely the site visits will. Anyway, thank you guys all for your time. As usual, it was it's extremely valuable to the to this process, and I appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the summer. With that, I'm going to close the meeting. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Um, Thank you. Bye. Get some sleep, Pam and Sarah. <laughs> Susan, Susan, sorry. Bye.